In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A very warm welcome to St. Mary's the University Church, particularly if you're joining us for the first time. You are most welcome. And it's also good to extend a welcome to those who are joining us this morning online. As we gather for this Eucharist, so we call on God's Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts as we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Mindful of God's grace, let us confess our sin. Most merciful God, Father, Father of our, our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ we, we confess, confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
we remain standing as we pray. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. For the word of the Lord.
Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to Philip, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. In this morning's gospel, Philip brings Nathanael to Jesus. We're not very far into John's gospel. We're still only in chapter one, please note. But we're beginning to find out that this is the way things tend to happen. Somebody brings somebody else to meet Jesus. Before this passage, at the end, which our passage this morning comes at the end of the chapter, we learn that Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was in the gang around John the Baptist. And Andrew hears about Jesus from John and brings his brother to Jesus. In fact, and talk about a very challenging model of church leadership, John the Baptist positively encourages his own followers to leave his gang and go to this newcomer, Jesus. John, at this point, is at the height of his ministry and reputation. He has wow factor. He runs what we like to call a successful church so that even the local bishops have to come and pay him attention. Jesus' reputation is nothing compared to John's at this point. Yet, John, in contrast with some recent examples of seemingly charismatic church leaders who make it all about themselves, John points away from himself. As John will say joyfully a little later in the gospel, he must decrease as Jesus increases. Note that there aren't any forced conversions going on here, no high pressure tactics, no promises about rewards in store or threats about punishments that will be averted. Just some friends telling their friends about Jesus. They know their friends will have to find out for themselves. All they ask is that they come and see. But they make the invitation interesting enough, 
attractive enough so that their friend responds and decides to check this out. Jesus does the actual job of conversion. People aren't badgered or threatened. There is no emotional blackmail or manipulation. The thing is, it's relational. There's a kind of triangle involved with us, Christ, and our friend. We can point to Christ, we can show a picture, we can tell a story. But then we hope it's Christ who meets the other person in person, establishes a new relationship. We can help set the meeting up, but now the relationship of our friend and Christ will take on its own life. We are not in control. And then somehow, both talker and listener, evangelist and friend, are converted. Because we now have to look at Christ again, because our friend points to him and invites us to look at new dimensions of Jesus we've never seen. But let's get back to Nathaniel. He goes along with Philip, uh, unenthusiastically, I think it would be fair to say, more out of courtesy than curiosity. He comes with his cynicism and prejudice and skepticism intact. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Out of Nazareth, that nowhere, no good town. We might consider our own prejudices. Writing this sermon, I was thinking, what would I say? For me, at the moment anyway, it might be something like, can anything good come out of the Republican Party? But you will have your own versions of that. I'm not getting political in the pulpit. I'm just saying that's how I feel. <laughs> but take your pick. Can anything good come out of Westminster, or the North, or the South, or the small town, or the metropolitan? So Nathaniel might be without guile or deceit, but he's certainly not without his prejudices, just like the rest of us. Nathaniel comes with a dose of contempt, suspicion, and a little bit of arrogance. So we don't know what Nathaniel saw when he looked into that face, but it's pretty sure that he saw himself laid bare and knew somehow Jesus saw him through and through. So even so, please note Jesus doesn't say, get your act together and then follow me, or shape up so that I can love you. I can't quite do that yet until you've got your act together. Jesus accepts him as he is. Jesus knows Nathaniel, receives Nathaniel, prejudice and arrogance and cynicism and all. But he won't leave him that way. If Nathaniel had wanted to stay the same, he'd have to stay under that fig tree. And we've all got a fig tree in our daily lives that we'd really rather prefer to sit under than to stir our stumps and respond to Jesus' call to follow him. There's a danger, too, for Christians that we'll jump up too quickly, come along too easily, say yes too easily, because all these centuries, that's exactly what the church has been saying, and for many of us, all these years, we've been saying it too. But to say yes too easily, too much out of habit, is somehow to make Jesus ours. But Jesus is not ours. He's not a personal possession. He's not an institutional possession, not the possession of a church, tribe, or party, or faction. We are his. We are his. And it's not just this great guy out of the past that we're going to face in this Eucharist. It is Jesus now, living our contemporary. In this Eucharist, we stand before his love and justice with all our secrets laid bare. But somehow, it'll be a face that we've always known, a face we can face. We'll know him when we see him and we'll, he'll certainly know us. And then in his eyes, probably we'll see ourselves as we are, and that's hard, and he will take us as we are, and that's even harder for us to take. It's always hardest to believe that we are loved for who we are. But he won't leave us 
under that fig tree. He'll take us as we are, but won't leave us as we are. Amen. So let us stand to profess the faith in which we seek to grow. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us worship the Saviour with joy and make our prayer to our Heavenly Father. God of joy, you make all welcome in your house. Let us give thanks for our church family and all those who serve in your church. Let us pray especially for Stephen, our bishop, Will, our vicar, and Hannah, our priest, as well as those who serve in ways that may remain unseen to man, but are valued by you. Lord, hear us. God of creation, you gifted us not only daylight and darkness, but also dawn and dusk. Let us give thanks for the manifold blessings of this world and the wonderful differences within your creation. Lord, hear us. God of peace, you sent your Son to walk among us and teach us the importance of the commandment to love one another. We call to mind those suffering in conflict, especially those in Ukraine and the Holy Land. Let us pray that through the unity of the Holy Spirit, our world can be returned to peace and harmony. Lord, hear us. God of wisdom, you called Abraham to be the father of many nations. Let us pray for the leaders of all nations that they will act with wisdom and humility to end such suffering. Lord, hear us. God of light, you sent your son as the light of the world. Let us pray in hope for your guidance as we reflect that light to those in the community around us. Lord, hear us. Shepherd God, you protect your flock and search tirelessly for those who wander from your fold. Let us pray for all those who are feeling lost and alone, that they, like Samuel, will hear your voice calling them and will find their way into your loving presence. Lord, hear us. God of compassion, you are ever present and walk alongside us in our suffering. Let us pray for those who are suffering in body, mind, and spirit. We ask you to wrap them in your loving arms. Let us call to mind those for whom our prayers have been asked, including Hattie, Sebastian, George, Maria, Julia, Serena, John, Ambrose, Jenny, Ellen, Elizabeth, Moose, and Francis. Lord, hear us. God of love, 
You heal the brokenhearted and bind up their wounds. Let us pray for those suffering bereavement, those who miss their loved ones, those who feel lost, and those who do not know how to feel. Let us pray to a God who feels our pain and ask for grace for all those navigating the strange and difficult waters of grief. Lord, hear us. God of life, you are ever present from when you moulded us in the womb and with us after death, death in our eternal life. Let us call to mind all those who have departed this life and pray for their restoration in the next. Let us pray especially for Barbara and Mary. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, hear us. God of mercy, you hear us even when we cannot speak. Let us take a moment to call to mind all those people, troubles and thanksgivings on our heart and entrust them to the Almighty Father. Merciful Father, Christ is our peace. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace
Lord, accept your people's gifts, not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but hearts and voices raised in praise of Jesus Christ, our light and our salvation. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give thanks and praise. All honour and praise be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory made present in our midst, in the coming of the Magi. The King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Mm.
Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. And so Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, it's very good to welcome you to St. Mary's this morning. Please do join us for refreshments in the De Broom Chapel over there immediately after the service. And at 12 noon today, there is in the old library a Sunday forum, and that will be an opportunity for you to find out a little bit more about the work of the old fire station, particularly their arts program there, and their very successful and effective partnership with uh, Crisis, the homelessness charity. So if you'd like to find out more about that, then do come and join us. Uh, next Sunday, there will be a parish lunch in the old library at 12 noon, so please make a note in your diary, and if you're able to help in any way by bringing food or serving or washing up the dishes, please have a word with Katie Hicks. Everybody's welcome to come to lunch. Um, you don't have to book or anything, just turn up and hopefully there will be some food for you. There will be some food for you. 
Um, this week, we resume a number of regular activities, including the Bible study on Friday lunchtimes, when we'll be studying the book of Esther. Please do come along, and there'll be tea and coffee available. That's in the old library on Fridays at 12.45. And then we'll also be starting confirmation classes on Tuesday lunchtime for anyone interested in baptism and confirmation. The Bishop of Oxford will be coming for the confirmation service on the 12th of May. If this is something that you've been thinking about, then please do have a conversation with one of the clergy. There's Latin litany and sermon at 3.30 p.m. this afternoon for all you classicists out there. A particular word of thanks to the choir now that they're back for doing such a fantastic job over Christmas. Um, and just one final thing, and that's to say that in the afternoon next Sunday, there are two things happening. Um, at three o'clock, there is an event in the town hall, um, an interfaith event for uh, civic community and faith leaders. Um, and uh, that's just to think about the current world situation um, and to talk about the importance of friendship, understanding, and peace between communities. So there are details about that in the back of the order of service. And um, then at 3.30 p.m., uh, there will be the baptism of Martin, uh, the little boy of uh, Naomi and Matthew. Um, Naomi is uh, our curate. Uh, for those uh, of you who've not met her, um, she's on maternity leave at the moment, um, but Martin's baptism will be next Sunday. So please do remember them in your prayers. And uh, they've also said that if you'd like to come, you'd be very welcome as well. Will you please stand? Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory, and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.